Hi everyone. I know, you saw that thumbnail and you thought, what is she talking about this time? And you probably thought I'm going to do some sort of dance for you. Well, don't worry. You don't want to see that. Trust me. And I'm Carolyn with Cello Discovery and I've been away from making videos for a little bit and um, recovering from a fractured ankle that I just didn't have the stamina to make some videos, but I'm back again and I'm ready to make some more videos for you. So today we're gonna to talk about cello choreography and what that means and how that's going to help you become a better player. So believe it or not, cello choreography is really part of, of a practice routine that you need to do in order to become a better player. And we all know choreography from from dancers and they're training the dancers to move the arms, the legs, the body in certain directions timed perfectly with the music so that when the performance comes along it's synchronized, it's planned well, and it's executed well. So choreography, it really is the sequence of movements that your body has to learn so that you can perform them consistently every time. And that's what we have to do as we play the cello. It's, it's all about choreography. And there may have come a time when you went to play a piece that you thought you knew, that you thought you had practiced correctly and spent all the hours that you needed to. And then you went on stage and things just felt amiss. You felt like your bow didn't know where to go, that your left hand didn't know where to go. And very likely the problem that you encountered was that you are moving a different direction than you had practiced it. And that's the choreography we're going to talk about. So let's say you are going to play a piece and you have a couple different options for bowing it. So I did some separate bows and I did some slurred bows and I started it on a down bow. When I got there, I was on a down bow. Let's say I goofed and I started it on an up bow. My hand's getting confused. It wants to go the other way. It's not really sure what it's supposed to do. It's because I'm doing the choreography backwards. Now in cello choreography, what we're talking about is a movement with the arm. The movement is either going to be this direction or it's going to be this direction. This is the down bow. This is the up bow. Now it also means shifting. Sometimes you can play notes in one position or you can play the same notes in another position. So if you practice it one way and then when it comes time to play it another time and you play it another way, you are not learning the choreography that you're supposed to when you learn that piece. And it's another thing is your bow needs to know how many notes are going to go on this movement and how many bows, how many notes are going to go on this movement. So it's a really important strategy that a lot of people overlook when they are practicing. And the easiest way to go about this is to take that time and really mark your music. I'm an advocate for marking lots and lots of bowings and fingerings in the music because as I'm practicing, if I stop in a certain place and I wanna, I'm not sure if I, if I haven't marked that D, I don't know if I'm supposed to start it on a down bow or an up bow. But if I've taken that time in advance and I've marked those bowings, I can go back to a place where I'm like, okay, that's a down bow. And I'm starting in the right place. So the more bowings that you can mark, the more consistently you're going to do those bowings. And then when you stop, when you're practicing, you're gonna pick back up on the right bow because you've marked it. And the same thing's true for fingerings. I mean, you might... <laughs> There are two ways to do that, fourth position, first position. So if you do it one way one time and another way the other time, that's going to be a problem. So the more consistently you can do the correct fingerings and you do the correct bowings, you are going to learn that choreography and you are going to play it better. And then when you get on stage or you're pl playing in front of anyone, or even just recording something, you're going to do it accurately because your body knows which direction it's supposed to go. So the other piece to this is marking where you're supposed to be on the bow. So if you think about it, this movement here is actually different from this movement here. Um, we talk a lot about bow distribution and that's all about playing in the right place at the right time on the bow. And so sometimes you have to mark that as well. You don't wanna get out into the bow somewhere where it's going to force you to go the, another direction of bowing from where you're supposed to go because you don't have enough bow left, so you have to go the other direction. So the other thing you can do is to mark things like 
is this in the lower half, LH, or is it in the upper half of the bow? Or are you supposed to use a full bow, a whole bow on that? Or are you staying right in the middle in that? So again, if you mark the bowings, down bows, up bows, you mark the slurs properly and you mark whole bow, half bow, you know, upper half, lower half, that's also going to help you stay in the right place. So if you take that time and you mark the down bows and you mark the up bows and you mark the fingerings and you play it that way every time, you will become a better player because you will be practicing the correct choreography so that you can play it accurately. I hope this tip was helpful to you. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel below and go check out Cello Discovery if you are looking for a place that has a lot of great lessons, interactive music, a welcoming community, everything you need to learn how to play the cello. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.